So I once took a word processing class, and the teacher I had was pretty hardcore, actually. She was uh, very disciplined, and she was very strict about the workflow of word processing. And, and what I learned from her was basically, you don't format as you go. You enter all the text, just from beginning to end, and then you format. So I'm going to apply that same approach here. All right, so I'm going to switch to jazz notation. We need the key of E flat major. All right, great. And anytime I want out of whatever tool I'm in, just hit the escape key. All right, I'm going to save that. Okay, so we have this pickup measure here, and it's kind of waiting to see what's going to be in here before it readjusts itself. So I'm going to first start entering notes using the very simple mouse entry. And this is real simple with Notion. So the keystrokes for the type of notes, instead of the finale or Sibelius, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, being different rhythmic values, Notion has a clever way of doing this. So it is W for whole notes, H for half notes, Q for quarter notes, E for eighth notes, S for 16th notes, and T for 32nd notes. Pretty cool, huh? All right. So eighth notes, I'm going to hit the letter E. And the first two notes in the pickup measure are a B flat and a G. All right, there we go. And it resized itself. All right, I need a dotted half note, so I hit H, D. All right, now I need two eighth notes, a B flat and C. All right here at measure two, I'm going to do some step time MIDI record. So I click this icon that looks like stairs and it highlights where I'm going to start. All I have to do is sight read from the book. They're all eighth notes, so I'm gonna hit the letter E and it's going to enter eighth notes. And you can see down here in the palette, I hit Q, switches to quarter notes, W, whole notes. There's sixteenths, there's thirty seconds, but I need eighth notes. So I'm going to play it in. Here we go. So there is a way to enter swing and the amount of swing that you want. 
Now we can lay it out a little bit. Let's see if we can force four measures and see what it looks like. That's okay, except it took it literally and put this ending here. And that's why earlier when I said that there was three measures in the second line, to make this look nice, you want this to force to the next system, and we can do that. Here we go. So now we have four measures, three measures, four measures, and then, just like in the real book, eight measures here. There we go. So just ex to explain that, what I did was I want this to be on the next system. So I selected that measure, went down to measure seven here, and I chose force new system. All right. Okay, so I didn't have to do much in terms of formatting, and that's why I didn't format from the beginning. I set it up to use the jazz font. I entered some titles, some text, some rehearsal markings. I entered the double bar lines just for visual cues, and I kept the bar lines on automatic. And then at the end here, I just forced this measure here, measure seven, to go to this line so that the endings would be all on one line. So it looks nice and neat. That's pretty much all there is to this part of the layout. Now we just need to enter the chords. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the rehearsal markings. So this is really simple, as you can see. The first chord is E-flat major 7. Before I let you go, I want to show you one extra feature. If I hit the tab key, you get this view. Now let me zoom in real quick. You see all these gray lines. What these are, these are like a MIDI piano roll in a DAW. So this is a note, and this is its length. And the shade that this is at right now, it's just gray. But if I select that note and I hold the option key and then either the up or down arrows, and I'm going to hit the down arrows, it's going to turn a different color. And it's going to give me a value. And that value is the velocity value. And if I bring that down to, or each time I hit the down arrow with the option key, I go down by 10. And as it gets more blue or purple, it's getting into the softer dynamics. I'll tell you what, I'm going to select this first line. Now I'm going to hit the option and down arrow. I'm going to bring it down to its lowest dynamic and bring it up a couple. And I'm going to do that for the rest of the piece. Now, ultimately, you would want to change the dynamics as you go and put some dynamic markings in it for it to play back correctly. I'm going to hit Tab. This will disappear. I'll see you guys soon for the follow-up video, Part 2, where I add the rhythm section. Have a good week, guys.